This is my Voron 2.4. It started its life as an LDO kit that we built entirely on stream about two years ago, and it might be my least modded printer build. Once I got it up and running, it sort of just worked, and it's because of that that I've been a little hesitant to make too many drastic changes. We recently finished the main build for Box Turtle, an awesome community project that allows for automated filament swapping. And as part of this process, the Stealth Burner was modded to a filamatrix. This gives the toolhead a blade for cutting filament and an integrated filament runout sensor. As part of getting this configured, I've ran into a few issues, largely stemming from my current probing and meshing solution. The LDO kit ships with Clicky Probe, which has worked well, but the dock takes up space that ideally I'd like to use for the filament purging during color swaps. It also has a Z probe for the nozzle, which is used for automatically setting your Z if you swap nozzles. But I tend to throw a high quality nozzle on my printers and sort of just let it ride until either that nozzle wears out or something goes wrong requiring me to actually change the nozzle. Because of this, I'm going away with Clicky and the Z switch and replacing them both with the E3D PZ probe. E3D sent one of these over last year for testing, and I've been waiting for a build to get one of these installed into. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at the E3D PZ probe, and go through the process of installing this into the 2.4. This will really help to clean up and simplify our work area, so I can get back to focusing on dialing in Box Turtle. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start by taking a look at the E3D PZ Probe. For starters, what is it? The PZ Probe is the latest bed leveling solution from E3D that uses a piezo washer to allow for nozzle probing. For anyone not familiar, a piezoelectric sensor or piezo is a form of sensor that converts various physical forces into an electrical charge that can be measured. These sensors are made of either ceramic or crystal materials that are small, lightweight, and hypersensitive. These aren't new in the 3D printing space, and I remember maybe five or six years ago that there was someone working on implementing these into Delta printers. I was always interested in them, but the project seemed fairly small and limited in its mounting compatibility. E3D sells this probe as a standalone option for anyone looking to implement it into their own printer or project but the one we'll be using is the Revo Voron PZ. This uses the E3D Voron Revo heatsink with a built-in PZ sensor within the upper fins of the heatsink. Since we know these sensors convert force into a static charge, we can see how it using the nozzle to press on the build plate and create pressure on that sensor is able to then send a signal back to its included board. This board contains eight presets that can be cycled through using the built-in button, each including different settings for probe sensitivity and noise cancellation. The really nice thing about this is that as far as your printer is concerned, it's just an end stop, which means that configuring the firmware for this is a really simple process. Now that we know a bit about the sensor, let's go through the installation process. The form factor of the Revo Voron heatsink with the PZ sensor is the same as the standard Voron Revo, so any mounts for that hot end will work fine with this one. The LDO 2.4 kit I built came standard with the E3D Voron Revo heatsink, which worked out really nicely for me because I didn't actually have to reprint any of the toolhead parts. However, we still need to mount the PZ board. And for this, I printed out the official E3D PZ board mount for the Voron Stealth Burner from E3D's printables page. This replaces the stock X carriage with one that has holes on the top to mount the PZ board, is a little shorter for clearance from the extruder's motor, and has a path to run the included small ribbon cable. Step one is to remove the tool head. Luckily, the stealth burner is a pretty easy one to disassemble, with just four screws going through its face, two screws holding in the hot end assembly, and another two screws holding in the clockwork extruder. Instead of removing the X carriage back from the linear rail and having my belts go everywhere and having to retention them, 
I printed out and installed a really handy AB belt clamp. This uses just a handful of heat inserts and screws to secure the AB belts to the X extrusion so that they don't move at all while you swap out your X carriage. This helped to speed up the entire swapping out process and I highly recommend printing one of these out just to have on hand. The hardware to install the new X carriage is identical to the stock one and the PZ board gets mounted using the two included screws directly into the holes on the top of the printed parts. I started off mounting that PZ board right away, but I actually recommend holding off until you've connected the little ribbon cable that's included just to make routing a heck of a lot easier. I then moved on to swapping out the hot end from the Voron Revo to the Voron Revo PZ. This just involved removing the screws in the printed part holding the hot end in place, swapping over the nozzle and heater core, and then clamping it back in. The one thing I wasn't entirely sure on was what the best way was to route the small ribbon cable coming off of the PZ sensor. Originally, I entertained running them through the same channel that the thermistor and heater wires went into, but I wasn't convinced the cable would be long enough to reach its board. So instead, I had the cable just pop straight out through the printed part, and I routed it through the opening in the center of the X carriage where my clicky wires had been. While doing this, I connected the ribbon cable to the PZ board and routed it underneath that board through the built-in channel of the printed part. Considering how small that ribbon cable is, attaching it to the PZ board was fairly simple. It uses a pivot or snap down style latch. So use your nail to open it, place the ribbon cable inside with the darker side of the connector facing up and press the latch down to lock it in place. With the cable installed, I used those two included screws to secure the board to the X carriage. Normally when assembling stealth burner, the instructions have you attach the extruder and then the hot end assembly. But for the sake of not putting unnecessary strain on that little ribbon cable, I recommend attaching the hot end assembly and then the extruder just to be safe. Finally, put the front cover back on the stealth burner to finish assembly. Now that the PZ probe is physically mounted, we just need to get it wired to our printer. The kit includes a somewhat intimidating long bundle of eight wires with four different connectors at the end. The good news is that most of this isn't needed, and it's there to allow for a wide range of applications, like reprogramming the setting presets, programming the microcontroller, as well as an I2C connector. For our use case, we only need three wires, which are red, brown, and orange. Red being five volts, brown being our ground, and orange being our signal. My original plan was to make my own harness just using one of the pre-crimped kits I have, but the PZ board side uses a JST SHR, which happens to be the one I don't have. So instead, I used my tweezers to depin all other cables and crimped JST PAs onto the end of the three needed cables to attach to my Nighthawk board. The length of wire and connector type needed will vary depending on which tool head board you're using or if you decide to run these wires all the way back to your controller. My original plan was to use GPIO 12 and 5 volts from the back side of Nighthawk and to pull ground from the probe connector. But I ran into some issues that ended up being a bad crimp, so I opted to move my filament runout sensor to the probe port and just use the back end stop connector from Nighthawk for all three of the PZ cables. Really important, the PZ board runs on five volts, so be very careful to make sure you are not plugging it into something like a Omron port that's set to 24 volts, or you will risk frying your board. With everything connected, I powered on the printer and looked at that PZ board. There's a power light that should always be on, and if things were wired correctly, each time you push up on the nozzle, you should see a very quick flash indicating that the PZ is triggering correctly. On the firmware configuration side, it's really simple. I started out by deleting my clicky folder along with all things I had referencing it and setting my Z end stop pin as a virtual end stop. Then I copied and pasted the clipper probe config from E3D's docs, overriding the probe section in my config. The only thing I changed was the pin to match the GPIO 12 that I'm running from Nighthawk. The added bit of G-code at the bottom 
adds a very short stall when probing and drops the motor current of your Z motors to reduce vibrations and get a more accurate probe. My buddy Steve from Steve Builds sent me a bit of additional G-code to add to this section, which has the hot end heat up to 150 Celsius before probing. This is done to soften any filament that might be on the nozzle, which would give an inaccurate reading. This is very similar to what the Voron Tap setup uses, and it's something I recommend doing. Now it was time to home the printer and see if everything was set up correctly. On first attempt, I highly recommend using your hand to trigger the probe and also having your mouse over the emergency stop button in case something goes wrong. I'm really thankful that I took my own advice in this case because the first time or first couple of times I tried homing, the tool head did not stop. After a fair bit of troubleshooting, I was able to locate the issue, which came in the form of a single bad crimp that I had done when I installed the JST connector. Once I swapped out that pin, everything worked as it should, and I moved on to performing a quad gantry level along with a full bed mesh. While my clicky probe often had to probe multiple times due to tolerance issues, the default speed of 5 millimeters per second felt pretty slow, so I ran a probe accuracy test to see what the tolerances were. With this, I got a standard deviation of 0.003, so I upped the speed to 10 millimeters per second and tried again. With this, my deviation increased to 0.0048, which is still within the recommended range found in clipper docks, and I was happy to be probing just a bit faster. You might be able to scale this even more, but with most things, it's a balancing act, and I'd rather keep it in this range where it's nice and consistent versus pushing it and potentially running into an issue that was preventable. In E3D's initial press release for the PZ Probe, they mentioned testing the probe 15,000 times for durability, so I'm confident that this is going to hold up for a long time. I'm really happy to have a much cleaner probing and meshing solution, and aside from still needing to route my tool head cables differently to prevent them from getting caught, I am really happy with my 2.4. Now I can get back to dialing in box turtle and fill a matrix so that I can run some multicolor test prints. And that has been the E3D PZ probe. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of what the probe is, how it works, and what the process is like to get it installed. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to E3D to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.